worthy principal professor vishal kumar dear colleagues from other colleges and sccm a very warm and pleasant morning to all of you i dr day of national workshop on delivery and design of case studies for this session we have with us a very eminent and renowned personality dr ajoy k day let me make a humble attempt to introduce him to all of you Dr Day is professor of decision sciences and operations management besides operations and supply chain management his areas of expertise include curriculum development and student engagement as thesis chair or committee member he has helped seven scholars to complete doctoral degree he is the editor of the south asian journal of business and management he is also an editorial advisory board of many journals Dr Day is a member of key steering committee of Global Business Schools Network. He also chaired the track on pedagogy at NACRA conference. Apart from publishing in reputed research journals, some of the articles of Dr Day have found place in highly acclaimed professional journals of management fraternity. As chairperson of Center for Management Case Development BIMTech, Dr Day is responsible for creating an environment to facilitate case research, writing and teaching. He has delivered lectures on different themes in various seminars and conferences. He has also presented his thoughts on the curriculum development at conference for Asia Pacific South Korea. He was one of the speakers for conference in Sri Vijaya University, Indonesia. Dr. Day has also edited edited a book titled Case Method for Digital Natives: Teaching and Research, published by Bloomsbury. I welcome you sir on behalf of college management faculty and all the participants with us we are honored to have you here sir now i request our worthy principal dr vishal kumar to formally welcome the honorable speaker uh, thank you dr manpreet am i audible yes sir you are okay thank you distinguished resource person of today's session dr ajoy k de Professor Birla Institute of Management Technology, Noida, faculty members and dear participants, a very good morning to all of you. Professor Day is a renowned academician, eminent scholar, and a very popular instructor, particularly in the domain of management cases. Right? His number of resource lectures are available on YouTube. His area of specialization is supply chain. decision making and operations management he is expert in teaching case studies and has conducted sessions in almost every part of india and even in abroad on behalf of shri arbindo college of commerce and management i welcome you sir on the second day of this online national workshop on delivery and design of case studies yesterday professor pankaj madan took two sessions on delivery of case studies and today professor day will take session on designing of case studies i am sure today's resource person will leave no stone unturned to discuss all technical points for writing cases because he is the master of his subject i once again welcome you sir and hope that your session will enrich the learning of all the participants thank you very much over to dr manpreet thank you so much sir um uh, uh, it's a request to ajay sir sir it would be fine for you if we uh, ask the queries of the participants in between or we can take the session queries at the end end of the session what i will do i will pause why it is echo hmm. there is a echo from you i will pause in between and we will take up questions that is how we will proceed but there is a echo can you can you do something uh, sir from our end there is no any echo maybe okay. some of the participants they might have uh, unmuted so by the time when you start your session everybody will be muted and there will no any problem of echo okay we can start yeah yeah please so 
So dear participants, if you have any query, you can write the same in the chat box. So without wasting much of the time, uh, I request uh, Dr. Day to enlighten us. We are uh, really eager to listen to you, sir. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Vishal. Thank you, Manpreet. And thank you, Pooja, uh, for bringing me here. It is my proud privilege to interact with you, particularly on how a case should be designed. Uh, it is not about teaching with cases, because unless you understand, unless we understand what is a case, what are its purposes, and what kind of structure it should follow, what should be there and what should not be there, until this point, these points are clear, we will not be able to do justice with case method, either writing cases or teaching with cases. So our focus is on, on this area. Next, please. Move, move. Uh, here, uh, I just wanted to share with you that why uh, I, is I, I am, um, I mean, I consider myself a little bit knowledge, knowledgeable in this area because for last five years, we have been associated with international conference on cases. And for the last five years, I have been editing a case research journal. So in that process, every year we see something like 250 plus uh, different cases at a different stages. Some are just proposals, some are just full cases and all that. So that gave us a lot of insight as to uh, what is a case and, and what are the common problems faced, common misunderstandings uh, among the writers. So we pick up those things and try to address those. Okay. So that is what is my qualification in this domain okay next i can't see uh, full screen here but it is a full screen visible to every participant sir uh, i can't read also no okay okay hmm. okay then i will uh, Ajoy sir, on the top uh, you have three dots. From there you can pick uh, full screen. Three dots on the top. There's an option of full screen mm -hmm. and uh, focus on content. Maybe that can help you. Anyway, I'm going to... Yes, sir. If you click on yeah. focus on content, only ah. PPT is. So, this the why cases? Because uh, cases are present everywhere uh, in every culture, in every mythology, every uh, say past, uh, whatever we learn, uh, they are all cases from the childhood of uh, a, a person, he is exposed to cases. All those cases of Mahavarat, uh, Ramayana, etc. They focus on imparting moral value, good practices. Similarly, if you see all around, every culture has similar practice. So cases come to us naturally. And why cases? Because in for management class, uh, we can bring in a chunk of real life into the class so that students can discuss the problems in that section and improve their two skills only. One, problem solving skill and second, decision making skill. So all entire uh, so management education is focused on using cases for two purposes. One, cover a portion, a very small portion of the case, uh, 
of the of the course and allow students to discuss among themselves not with the with the teacher discuss among themselves in a in small groups so that through debates and discussion they understand how to identify a problem and how to identify its solution and how to decide so basically this is the two prong use of a case now case study uh, is a is a tool a pedagogical tool which means a, a faculty can use in class it is also a research strategy like you have survey similarly case study is a research strategy so uh, in in today's deliberation we will just briefly touch upon the research strategy where when case is used as a research strategy we will not go deep into it okay what are cases cases are nothing but uh, a real scenario Uh, which has been uh, stated or which has been written which has been discussed in a story form in a narrative form but it is not only narrative it must have some course learning outcome because unless a case delivers a course learning outcome it will have no use to be taken up in a class it will be wastage of time so the purpose of case is not information sharing you should not write a case or you should not pick up a case just because you want to know some new information that is not the purpose for that there are news there are tv there are many there are internet okay. that information whatever you say that should be related to your course and it should help in discussions okay. unless there is a there is a dilemma there is a problem discussion will not take place so it should be some information because then only the interest will be created but simply serving in information is not a case it must have some learning outcome which is related to the course that you are teaching and on top of it it should allow students to discuss in a smaller groups among themselves so that they learn how to solve a problem and how to decide so this is the major uh, role of a of a case in a class now there are two ways of uh, triggering a case something may have happened suppose a strike has taken place and due to a strike the organization is closed now because of closure there will be lot of other problems so how to solve those problems that could be there could be several cases written on that so this is what is a situation where an event has triggered the need to write a case so these are called event driven cases most mostly teaching cases come out of such situation so event related cases are mostly uh, teaching cases uh, the major uh, characteristic of this is you describe the context the context within which the event has happened okay and describe the content context and from there you create dilemma dilemma must have few options and the students will discuss those options and arrive at which option is the best suited there is nothing nothing right or wrong answer it is the best optimal answer because purpose is not finding answer purpose is not actually solving the dilemma purpose is to allow students to discuss within themselves 
so that they learn how to decide after identifying the problem. Okay. Now, this is one type of case. The second type of case is actually in which you, you study a phenomena. I go back, any research is done on a phenomena. Phenomena means uh, organization level phenomena, say engagement, commitment, uh, performance, um, all these are phenomena at the organization level. Similarly, you get phenomena at the personal level. So a person is how to engage a person, how to motivate him, those are the phenomena. Similarly, a phenomena can be a process. How to make supply chain lean is a phenomena. Making supply chain lean is a phenomena. So always a research happens on a phenomena and for studying that phenomena, you require a context. And for studying the phenomena, you also require a theoretical support, a theoretical backing. Because if there is no theoretical backing, the robustness will not come. And other people will not accept your findings. They will hesitate. Because they may say that, yes, uh, you may have found the these kind of findings. If I do in my context, what is the surety that I will arrive at similar findings? So that doubt remains. That is what uh, the role of a theory. If I say that, look, I have studied this following these kind of theory and following the process rules, of conducting a research, then my findings will be much more authentic and much more generalizable. So a phenomena, when it is studied, you can study a phenomena with the help of survey. You can study a phenomena with the help of case. Okay. So when you are using case as a context to study a phenomena, that is exactly is case research. It is not solved teaching cases or research cases. There are many people who are under this impression that if the dilemma is solved in a teaching case and solution is found and shared with the reader, that becomes a research case. It is wrong. So research case is not driven by event. It may or may not be driven by, but event is, is not a must for writing a research case. So you can pick up any phenomena, mindfulness, there are many phenomena. Even the communication during pandemic, compassion, or say agile business model, these are all phenomena. So you can pick up anything that is interesting to you and that is related to a management course, a section of that course, not the entire course, and find a context where you can study that phenomena and derive your findings. That is how you can possibly generate new knowledge or extend an existing theory. So that is the role of a research case. I can pick up one or two questions here, basically on the distin distinction between a teaching case and a research case. Is there any question? No, sir, for the time being, there's no question in the chat box. Mm -hmm. So either they have not listened or they have not understood. <laughs> anyway. anyway, so uh, what is a teaching case? See, teaching, um, uh, forget about teaching. Any research should go through three stages of checks. Whatever you do, it should be relevant. Relevant means it should be contemporary. Okay. It should be, uh, it should be authentic. Okay. And it should be appealing. 
because unless it is appealing nobody will take it so there has to be an, a good story a recent story narrated in a very engaging form and the characters in that case should be, should get voice so that they can express themselves so then they can share their decisions or their apprehensions and that can be discussed in class discussion is essential because unless there is discussion there is no learning among the students so all these is fine but a case finding is highly contextual whatever you have found through the case study that will apply in that context so purpose is not generalization whereas for a research it has to be generalized so that is the thing which we will do, we can discuss later right now it is not uh, aligned with the scope that we was wish to cover uh, so for, i mean remember that case findings uh, cannot be generalized but they are usable by any other person provided the context is more or less same so uh, research cases all i mean all of us we know uh, the pin factory the adam smith pin factory uh, actually adam smith went there to study Uh, how to increase productivity of pin production he did that but as a by product he found he conceptualized what is today known as specialization whereby he clubbed similar tasks and assigned to one worker so that that worker becomes proficient in performing those smaller tasks so that is what is specialization similarly hawthorne studies hawthorne study was again done to study the productivity under uh, well lit or under illumination changing illumination that was the objective and what we found was motivation so motivation is specialization these are phenomena uh, the the study was carried out in a case context because it was done within a factory with defined number of people with defined number of uh, processes so it is a case situation and that is how, what is a case research uh, study phenomena based case research study so the cases can be can be fact driven which is event driven uh, which must have dilemma which should give rise to discussion in class in the other type of cases research cases it is phenomena driven you decide which phenomena to study and this is what is research decision driven and the output of a phenomena driven case study research is considered as research output a teaching case is really not a teaching a, a research output why because through the teaching case the faculty wishes to cover an existing course segment a small portion of which is already existing people know about it so there is no new knowledge generation whereas a research means you are pushing the boundary of existing knowledge so a teaching case can never be qualified as a research output whereas a phenomena based case may get qualified i am using the word may get qualified as a research output provided you can you can show the theorization in pushing the boundary of existing knowledge that means generating some new knowledge so this is the major difference today we will uh, we will study only the teaching cases now why use case method uh, this is a great engaging tool 
it allows the students to reflect on what they have learned and once they reflect then their knowledge integration may take place they may relate that so and so professor had shown us or had had uh, taught us the break even point which is a part of management accounting and that can be applied in this particular situation which is related to production or which is related to supply chain so that kind of integration takes place once the student faces a problem and looks for alternative solutions and reflects upon his his learning classroom learning integration will happen so this this kind of situation allows the students to critically think what is critically thinking critical thinking means that you you map the exact situation that you are facing evaluate all the pros and cons and select the best possible alternative to solve that problem that is in pure term creative thinking okay so creative thinking can be applied by a surgeon while operating a patient creating th thinking can be applied by a mason who is placing bricks and cementing them creative thinking can be applied by a manager or coach of a team of a football team during the play when he has to decide who to pick up as a replacement when to pick up a new new replacement those are all par part of creative thinking so creative thinking is very very essential for any student what it says that if you want to take a decision go and understand the situation from all aspects and then take the suitable decision that is what is creative thinking okay so it allows uh, reflexive thinking it allows integrative thinking it allows uh, creative thinking and as a result if you keep on applying unconsciously creative thinking you have become lifelong learner because every time in life whenever you face a problem your tendency will be to map it correctly holistically and then look for solution to find the most optimal one this is what is lifelong learning so uh, these are the basic uses why case method is uh, is is so popular there are challenges also the major mainly two challenges one uh, as you know students they feel shy in expressing their opinion some of some of them are very extrovert but most of the students do not participate in discussions that is a major challenge second challenge is that when you are allowing students to discuss in smaller groups many times the the uh, the arguments are pointless it becomes your your opinion versus mine that should not happen okay so these are the challenges which are uh, there are many ways of uh, overcoming them another challenge which a faculty may face is evaluating students in a case class within in evaluation also a group evaluation is still possible but individual evaluation within a case class is really difficult really challenging now teaching versus uh, research cases say teaching cases actually bring the practical knowledge in a class teaching cases do not add anything extra to the existing body of knowledge that is not the purpose okay it is not able to generate any new knowledge thereby it doesn't qualify as a research output teaching cases highlight the practical application of any theory or concept which is already existing like uh, you must have heard blue ocean strategy 
Now, blue ocean strategy creates uncontested marketplaces. It it eliminates or makes uh, makes opponents competition totally irrelevant. They may be present, but they cannot affect your process or your uh, decisions. That is what is irrelevancy. So blue ocean strategy, you can pick up a context where you see that blue ocean strategy is being applied. So that can be taken up in class and discuss with the students what was the dilemma and for which a blue ocean strategy is, is deployed. And this is how blue ocean strategy is getting manifested. So this, these are the purposes of uh, teaching it. Whereas research case purely um, must generate some new knowledge. Okay. Don't write a research case if you cannot uh, articulate it in such a manner that it leads you to something new. Similarly, no teaching cases should be written if there is no dilemma. Just narration, what Patanjali has done for last five years cannot be a teaching case because there is no dilemma, first thing. And if you, do, if you just narrate what they did, how many uh, new stores opened, what kind of factories, and all those things, there is no theory attached. So for a teaching case to be really appealing, useful for a faculty, it must have a dilemma. It must be linked to some kind of learning outcome of a portion of the theory. And it should be written with theoretical support. So li linking with theory is important. D deriving learning outcome is another point. Okay. So teaching versus this we have discussed. Why a faculty should take up cases as pedagogical tool? Why can't she deliver lectures, which is very easy and lecturing mode can help in covering more course, more section of a course within a defined time. So advantage of cases are, uh, it can focus, it can allow students to discuss around a module of a course, very focused approach. And it improves definitely engagement in class. If students get drawn and they start discussing among themselves. That is what is the beauty of case, case class. And during this discussion, they learn how to decide by identifying the problems and its causes. Okay. And if you are doing research with case, that means, uh, let me give you an example. If I ask how to engage MBA students in their respective classes, if I ask this kind of question, this will require a survey method because I'm not particular about a, partic a particular institute or particular class. I try, I'm trying to find a general answer that how students in MBA class can be engaged. So for this, I have to go and survey students from different MBA institutes and collate data and analyze and find out. If I ask the same question, say, how can I engage MBA students in say BIMTEC or in your institute, that particular institute which means I have defined the context. I have created a bounded context. This is what is the characteristic of a case. Bounded context. Once you bound, once you narrow down the scope, the data collection requirement comes down because as you know, case can be written, case strategy can be written even on one person, even on one organization. Okay. So once you have bounded it, and you have defined the context very well, you may find a chance to cross that boundary. Once you cross that boundary, 
maybe the theory selected it may fail in explaining the phenomena that is an opportunity where a new knowledge may come up so always select a context and the phenomena matching phenomena so that you can find a, a space within that context or just outside that context where the phenomena cannot be explained with the existing theory and then you can propose that this is what will happen if you cross this limit this is very interesting i tell you so let us summarize uh, what is a case case could be two types like event driven and phenomena decision driven and case is used in class for two purposes one covering a course second allowing students to practice their decision making and problem solving skills only two but these two should be in a real world situation in in actual practice that is where the case comes in it brings in the actual practice in a class you can also do simulation almost similar output similar outcome that also may bring the real world real business world into the class characteristics of a teaching case see every teaching case must have learning outcome but only giving learning outcome is not enough because they must be mapped with bloom's taxonomy learning taxonomy so uh, as i show you this is what is bloom's taxonomy bloom's uh, the taxonomy was revised in i think 2004 or 2006 and it expanded to six layers so remembering understanding applying these are considered as lower level for lower classes uh, and applying analyzing evaluating creating i have repeated applying so applying analyzing evaluating creating these are supposed to be a higher level classes for example if you are designing a learning outcome or if you are collecting a case for executive education not mba executive education that case should have such case questions by which a person can understand how to analyze how to evaluate and how to create new knowledge something of that sort okay so for that uh, in this slide on the right hand side uh, those indicate the right kind of verbs to be used for framing such questions for creating use assemble construct create design that kind of thing okay so this also distinguishes a case that can be taken up in mba second year that can be taken up in mba first year that can be taken up in bba courses or that can be taken up in executive education so this is where the difference comes in so matching bloom section i mean uh, with your case questions is very important there is no point in asking uh, the remembering thing remembering a skill at mba level that is not required so problem solving and decision uh, decisional cases are preferred and you understand who is a protagonist protagonist is a person around whom the problem or the dilemma revolves which means that a protagonist can decide and change the outcome of that dilemma he, he cannot be an outside person he has to be within the system so that is what is protagonist so these type of 
cases, problem solving and decisional, they must have a protagonist. Why? Because the students can relate with the protagonist while taking decisions or while discussing the possible uh, causes of the problem or the possible remedies. They feel like as if they are taking decision on behalf of that protagonist. That is why protagonist is a must. Otherwise, there are many other types of cases where protagonists need not be there. Even for a research case, protagonists need not be there. Need not be there. Okay. And the, the, the purpose of a case is to create a drama. They create a really uh, live situation where students get excited and they start discussing. So dramatization is important. That is where the dilemma plays a role. So first few paragraphs, so our recommendation is first two paragraphs should be written in a very dramatic form. And within those first two paragraphs, the reader should be, the dilemma should be placed before the reader. You cannot wait, you cannot make the reader wait for knowing the dilemma, which is which may be embedded deep inside the case. Okay. Now, every teaching case must have a teaching note. Teaching note is not for students. Teaching note is a helping note for the faculty. So every teaching case must have a teaching note because it captures the basic purpose of writing the case as author had originally thought of. So normally a teaching note should be written by the author, which normally doesn't happen also because case is written by very accomplished management authors. And the teaching notes is subcontracted to his teaching assistant or his research assistant and all that. Anyway, so that is the role of a teaching note. Teaching note has two sections. One is called content. The other one is called process. In content, you must have a summary of the case, not the full case. Why summary? Because teaching note has to be an independent document. So if a faculty chances upon a teaching note of a case, at least she should be able to decide what is the case about so that she can look for a case if it matches her requirement of covering a theory. So that is why summary is important. Which theory it is based on, that should be written with very, very few uh, citations. And case questions with suggested answers, not full answers, suggested answers and case questions should be a part of the content of the teaching note. The balance portion of teaching note has how to manage the class, how the case discussion should go from one stage to another, how much time is required, how will you engage students, and how will you evaluate individual as well as group. So these kind of suggestions are given in the teaching note. A faculty need not follow that, but it is a kind of help which she can take and improve upon. Okay. So teaching note is evaluated by actually uh, the way it is written, way the questions are framed, whether they are mapping with uh, Bloom's taxonomy or not, the suggested solutions, also the focus, because with a case, if you want to solve too many dilemmas, that complexity rises so high that such cases are not manageable in a class. So a student get confused. So it should be very focused. You write multiple cases within the same context to tackle different learning outcomes. Don't mix up that. So uh, these are the pointers on which a teaching note as well as a case is, uh, is evaluated. And moreover, which is not written here, 
every faculty must create her own teaching plan before taking up a case. So how the case will unfold, how will you introduce the theory, how will you, which questions will you ask, what kind of answers you expect, and also you must envisage what kind of students uh, may ask for which you should be ready for answering. So entire thing has to be mapped along with time, along with focus on engagement and evaluation. So that is what is teaching plan. And that has no particular format. It varies from faculty to faculty, but my earnest suggestion is that before deciding to take a case class, prepare your teaching plan, plan extensively. So Bloom's taxonomy, this I have covered, undergraduate and postgraduate, it purely depends on which of the six Bloom's taxonomy the case has covered. If the case stops at remembering, understanding, applying kind of questions, it is definitely for UG class. So, so if a PG level case is administered in UG level, they will not be able to, uh, to relate because they are not proficient in analyzing, evaluating, and creating. Okay. So characteristics of a case study research, I have, uh, I have already discussed. It is the study of a phenomena within a bounded context so that you can study the phenomena, interpret it, and discuss it in depth. And you define the context and choose the corresponding, because every research, every research happens at the confluence of, at the sangam of a phenomena, a context, and suitable theory. They must overlap. And that area in which a research takes place. What is research? Research is nothing but studying a phenomena in depth. Up till here, is there any question? Again, no question. Yes, yeah, sir, there is no question. Uh, so I suggest uh, you <laughs> start questioning. Let, yeah. let you and Pooja, because unless there is discussion, uh, it will not make sense. Pooja, uh, do you so have I, any questions? Yeah, I, I had a confusion. So can I? Yeah, sure. Uh, sir, you just uh, uh, told us about uh, two cases. One is teaching and the other one is research case. So uh, what I grasped is uh, teaching cases for students, but the research cases are particularly for enhancing the knowledge of the teachers only. Yes, yes. See, teaching case is a tool, is a teaching pedagogical tool. Yeah. Like you do lecturing, teaching case is something similar to that. And a research a teaching case is not uh, a, a research output. You cannot, for NIRA, for, for, you cannot cite that you have written a teaching case. Maybe you have written with a very uh, good teaching note as well. But that is not research. Case study research is a research output. Have I answered? Yeah, sir, yes, yes. Any other question? Ajoy, sir, I have a question. Yeah, sure. Sir, this is with regard to the research case that you're discussing. Like, uh, uh, I'm not from management field. I am uh, into accounting, finance, and law. Okay. So in accounting, if I am taking up one phenomenon and I'm writing a case in what a sense. What is that phenomenon? What is that? Uh, phenomenon? Like buyback of uh, shares of by a company. And mm -hmm. I'm picking yeah. up. Sorry? Buyback of shares of a company. Okay. Hmm. Right. A specific event uh, of by that company, and then uh, I may pick up one company, or I I may pick up number of companies that uh, went for buyback in a particular span of time, hmm. because of some changes in the uh, provisions, legal provisions or so. So in that case, uh, that will be a research case only. 
because i will be studying uh, the background of that buyback buyback taken up by the company and then the financial implications that that buyback brought to that company in the sense of their uh, future it's profitability a, or their it's a good good example to understand what is a bounded context and what is uh, a not bounded context for example uh, who has uh, asked for buyback right now tcs no monica sethi sir huh? no monica no which monica company sir. has uh, floated so like, a buyback uh, or I going to the, buyback yeah tcs it, i will tcs i, I did it i did it a few years back that was one of the vardhaman companies no no that is uh, see fine you have if you have studied a particular company a vardhaman company and uh, you have studied how they have uh, planned and implemented shares buyback what is the purpose what is your then purpose I, of writing this then i also found out the financial implications of the same in terms of their you know Again. their Again. profitability Again. ratios in future or their that's uh, fine that's right so from this discussion it it appears that your purpose is to educate students how to plan for a buyback and what are the financial implications what are the how the money will be deployed or where from the money will come and all those things so it is purely focused on on student learning learning few new things of finance related to finance these new things what the students has learned is already existing okay so there is no research in this okay you have used a situation you have used an an event and you have taken one particular company to get data that is how the case is written so it is a teaching case now the second thing which you said that if you take multiple companies who have gone for buyback study all those the moment you have chosen few few companies all may be indian all may be mncs all may be a mixture or something like that then your context becomes indian economy so context got uh, very large but still it is a context it is it cannot be generalized because the same finding or similar finding cannot be applied in singapore or cannot be applied in other developed economies so your economy indian economy serves as a context if you are studying buyback phenomena of multiple companies all may be indian all may be public sector all may be mncs but embedded in indian economy so that is your context the moment you mix up and look for collecting data or comparing with many other economies then it becomes more generalizable so generalizability increases once you start expanding the context context accordingly the tools according the decisional tools methodology data collection all these things will change have i answered yes sir sir in connection with this uh, in case we want to besides go, using it for as a teaching case if we want to also make it a research case what are the you know requirements requisites no, for the same no 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 i would suggest uh, that you start uh, writing a teaching case okay. why because it is uh, it is easy to uh, with with your deep knowledge you can pick up a context and study a phenomena which is related to the course uh, very well and you stop there okay a teaching case uh, cannot be converted into a research case unless you do a fresh thinking where teaching case stops you, when you collect data when you study the phenomena like say buyback phenomena and you collect data and start analyzing while in the process of analyzing you keep checking with theory and once you find so called ratios and once you can prove something with those ratios that means you have got a perfect match between what you have found and what the theory says 
a teaching case stops there a teaching case stops there that is the purpose served okay from here you cannot take the same thing to a research domain research case domain for that you have to formulate a research question not a dilemma research cases do not have dilemma in teaching case there will be a dilemma the dilemma was how it will affect the financial ratios or something like that okay so you have to formulate a fresh research question you may use the same context you may interview people of bardhman people you may go and talk to the finance manager collect more data or all those things so you require a fresh look at your research question and you have to learn a new method of data collection data collection for qualitative research okay it is not hardcore data it is not yes no it is not only financial data okay so a research case becomes interesting when you study a phenomena and that phenomena is related to either an organization you study the organize what is going on within an organization or you study what is going on inside the manager's mind the protagonist mind or you study a process and see how it will get unfolded in future how it can be improved so these are the interesting areas so choose a question related to these areas and then collect data that collect data because you are peeping you are trying to peep into the process of organization so unless you collect live data current data you cannot write a research case people say that secondary data driven research cases can be written but please take it from me it is really difficult because you cannot collect so much of data point from the secondary sources which will tell you that what the company is thinking about next year's strategy those things will not come okay and a, a live person can easily give you a wealth of information out of which you can call out your important information by which you can answer the research question so collection of data question what i am hinting at uh, live data interview data is a must but at the same time for writing a research case you must triangulate data you must show to the reader that i have followed a rigorous process whatever my findings are there they are not biased by my thoughts my decisions they are not biased so for that you require multiple data sources so you one could be an interview other could be a, a secondary set secondary data published data or their uh, annual reports their website their all that thing third could be a discussion a, a focused group kind of discussion okay so plan that way so you require that expertise to to write a research case that is data collection expertise plus data analysis you will collect live data you will collect interview statements you will record them but how do you call out the the information from that which will help to solve your problem that process of analysis has to be shown normally what we find that i have taken the author writes i have taken so many interviews and all that these are the questions asked and from there from those distribu- uh, interviews i have found these things the connection between these two is not shown that means you have lost out on trustworthiness trustworthiness is a major factor driving the reliability and validity of any research case so you have to understand the analysis for analysis my suggestion would be try out first if you know something fine if you do not know then try out thematic analysis first followed by grounded theory 
for analysis followed by followed by i think narrative uh, i mean in terms of easiness i am saying that otherwise you can you can pick up any you can pick up phenomenology also i mean there are many many methods so have i answered this question yes sir wonderfully sir uh, we often uh, only listen to uh, the case study experts in context of management cases only this is for the first time in a very elaborative way you are explaining to us how can accounting phenomenon also be converted into a good case whether teaching or research case our, thank you our so much focus let mm. me also share you one thing which may not uh, occur to you see mm. we are editing a journal a case research journal now the uh, uh, the name is south asian journal of business and management cases cases is in the journal title so what we have been mainly focused on teaching cases because that is what we get in numbers mm -hmm. many people are now proficient in writing teaching cases of course they require some guidance some some improvement and all that and we never nobody actually prints uh, teaching teaching notes except mm -hmm. few uh, few few journals because it takes time it takes space sorry it uh, so teaching cases we were publishing and we were very very happy okay uh, newer phenomena is coming up and all those things but when we applied for abtc listing they refused they said what is new why should i take it as a research journal and in research journal even if ours is a case journal we have to fight based on citation and case never gets cited a teaching case rather yes. never get cited because it is highly contextual it has happened within a bounded context so if you create or find a similar context elsewhere then only so who will cite your teaching case so there was no citation that is why we were refused then we started thinking that we can't change the identity of the journal it is a case research journal so what do we do so our research question was we did extensive research on this i will we will publish a, a paper on this sometimes later uh, so our research question was what do we do so that cases get cited <laughs> very difficult we know that cases because of contextual bind binding never get cited but my question was how can i what can i do so that cases get cited so we started by studying i am i'm i'm not a case expert actually i have i have written only three cases <laughs> which got published i'm not so i started learning i started discussing with many people we conducted many interviews and all that finally to cut the story short we found that case is a qualitative research method case strategy falls in a qualitative case research case uh, no qualitative research domain and we knew that quantitative method methods are very good for testing a theory because we start with assumptions we convert them to hypothesis and collect data to either accept or reject those hypotheses or those assumptions and the matter ends there it cannot generate a good level of new knowledge for quantitative method new knowledge is establishing a relationship establishing a framework that's it new knowledge doesn't come up you don't develop a new meaning of say what is uh, what is uh, said uh, disturbed life or what is uh, disruption or what is mindfulness those kind of things you do not get a new or mindfulness during pand pandemic self aware uh, self awareness or self exploration during pandemic so these kind of things cannot be studied with quantitative whereas case can help so we started looking for what kind of case not teaching cases and all that. finally we found that there is one type of case which is known as qualitative case study research which we never knew actually i i was totally ignorant about that it got 
formulated sometimes in 1995, but that formulation was later on challenged and better formulation have come out in 2004, 2006. So technically speaking, uh, qualitative case study research is still running in its adolescence. It is hardly 10, 12 years old. So we have shifted our, our entire cases uh, research on accepting qualitative case study research. And qualitative case study research is studying a phenomena within a context. That is how, we, and believe me, it took almost two and a half years because we are community driven. We have social media network, a community of case authors. Right now we are connected with almost 14,000 plus uh, chosen case authors. Cho when I use the word chosen, I have very few authors who are, who are statistics teacher, for example, because the statistics rarely uses cases. Yeah. So I prefer OB, I prefer a strategy, I prefer entrepreneurship, I prefer sustainability, I prefer all those things, marketing and all that. So that is how we have created and they provide us their cases. So how do you make these people aware of what is qualitative case study research and help them in writing? So we are at that juncture. And uh, from last year, that is 21 April issue, uh, we started publishing only case, qualitative case study research. Uh, and the downloads for last year doubled than year before, just doubled. That is the effect of uh, proper planning and proper execution and taking it to qualitative case study research. A very interesting. Thank you. Indeed. So shall we go ahead? Yes, sir. sir. Uh, I have a question in chat box. Uh, should I? Uh, sure. sure. Uh, so this is a question by Dr. Robin Kaushal. Uh, she asked, is it relevant to write review of literature in the case study as well? And secondly, if the case study is based on interview method, how to report that? Can we directly quote the interviews? Okay. Okay. See, uh, you have asked two questions. One, uh, that first question is very relevant. Uh, but now we are uh, digressing from discussing teaching cases. We are, di we are discussing more on research cases. I do not know the other members of the audience whether they are finding it of value or not. Okay. Anyway, see, in, in quantitative research, uh, you do literature review and the purpose is to find a knowledge gap knowledge gap. Knowledge gap is beyond uh, your context. You cannot say that I will study this phenomena. I will ask this question because such studies have not been carried out in India, in Maharashtra <laughs> or, or in, in India, in, in Pune. You cannot say that because literature review means you have used Google and when you have used Google, you have searched all places and you must have found some places where this problem has been solved. The similar problem with similar purpose have not been solved maybe for India, but that is not a knowledge gap. Unless, unless you can show that the same phenomena which has been studied elsewhere have not been studied in India and I suspect, I propose, I am convinced that religion, ethnicity, values, all these are regional context, regional characteristics, Indian characteristics. These things might influence. So if your purpose is that, then it is a research. And that purpose of the research is extend the knowledge of that phenomena, which is already known and take it to the realm of, take it to the context of religiosity, values, um, maybe uh, say nuclear, uh, nuclear and uh, joint family. There, those characteristics, if you are embedding in, in your context, then it is a good research. Okay. Now for this, this is the role of literature review where you are looking for knowledge gap. When you are writing a research case or research case study, 
your purpose is not looking for knowledge gap why because you have already decided upon a phenomena and you have also understood that the same phenomena how through which lens will you study through which theoretical lens will you study for example uh, compassionate communication which happened uh, mostly during pandemic uh, is it a is it a leadership trait or is it driven by something else so that decision is taken before however it is not used in the beginning but you are so once you have decided that this phenomena so and so phenomena i will study from through the lens of either leadership or maybe entrepreneurship or maybe communication maybe some some other behavior once the the theory theoretical lens is fixed that will guide you how to ask questions which questions because you are you have already decided your theoretical lens but you have kept it broad you have not come down to transformational leadership you have said leadership so you will ask questions where the answers might drive you to to leadership another thing in quantitative research we travel from assumptions to data assumptions questions theory data analysis that is how we travel as a researcher in a qualitative research it is just opposite qualitative research says that you decide the phenomena you decide the theoretical lens don't make it very specific keep it broad and choose a context that context should allow you to study the phenomena unhindered without any obstruction so within that context collect data having collected data then take a intense look at that data to try to find out some pattern data should drive you to your to the findings you should not say that yes i have seen here leadership let data speak data speak means you are looking for themes within that data so you must understand what is a theme and what is not a theme rather so you look for themes and then say that okay data says this theme theme number 1 is it related to leadership which leadership is it related to something else say if if my choice is entrepreneurship can any part of entrepreneurship can be related to this this theme that is how you travel so you collect data you analyze that data and come out with theoretical finding which may give you new knowledge provided your theory theoretical limits have been identified so i go back to my my discussion that for qualitative research qualitative case study you select a theory select a context and within that context try to find such limits limits of that theory beyond which the theory fails to explain theory doesn't have any answer theory falls silent in explaining the phenomena and that is the opportunity that is the opportunity i i can give you an example if you have time because i will need uh, i will need minimum half an hour more is that okay yeah sure sir it is fine ha eh? what how are we doing on time so we can go up to 12:30 12:30 okay so i will give you a very very small example that what is new knowledge and what is that theoretical limit this story is about a small trader uh, a young person uh, who is educated but not mba he inherited a small trader shop cloth trader shop 
where he used to they used to sell uh, garment sarees uh, dhotis and all that okay uh, it was in barasat barasat is a small sleepy town on the border of west bengal and bangladesh it was that uh, shop was located in a fairly good market area and there was a lot of problems for uh, for inheritance uh, this boy finally managed all those things and he became the owner young young person young blood so his business was okay after few months of his takeover due to change in municipal plan a huge flyover came up in front of the row of shops in which his shop was also there though it was a bazaar area but because of flyover his entire location or the facade gone so this was a major setback for so other people they shifted to other areas smaller bazaar areas they sold off those uh, shops but this fellow said why i will not i will not shift i don't have money to shift so he stayed there what he did that time those were the cases uh, those were the time where cable tv was alive in a small town like barasat so he tied up with cable tv got a slot fixed evening slot and started uh, show, showcasing his shop his his uh, items each item was numbered and he acted as a narrator of that event and it became very popular so he used to show that uh, and uh, viewers were encouraged to note down the number so that at a later point of time they can come and see and browse through other items also that is how he he solved his uh, problem of facade the face face of that shop this was an innovation another incident later on uh, he he was a good designer so he used to uh, earlier they used to buy from big bazaar bada bazaar of calcutta and get the discount on wholesale and sell at retail with their margin this he shifted to specific places in india like say bangalore or mysore for silk varanasi for silk silk some other place for jamdani uh, in bangladesh there is dhaka uh, there are many so he found out that where this expertise lies where the uh, you, he will get lot of uh, weavers and lo lot of suppliers so that he will get a fair price and he was good in designing so he started designing himself and test out and give it out and buy their entire stock so their their his cost came down he he got unique choices uh, that same sari will not be found anywhere else because it is his design something like that is how he created this thing on another occasion i will stop by giving this three there is one more another occasion you know small traders day pile up by taking loan etc their inventory just before the festive season so before diwali and dashera he had piled up his stock and unfortunately due to some short circuit in his small shop the entire thing got gutted he was devastated because he didn't have money he had exhausted his loan and he didn't know what to do so that year was a was a disaster for him but what he did out of this experience he now he focused on not only buying sarees but he went a step down in that supply chain he started looking for villages where you find lot of weavers one village may be very good in spinning one village may be very good in in dyeing one village may be good in stamping and that printing out the entire thing like this he identified villages in village means hardly 40 50 uh, families so he assured them that next year if you if you produce as per my plan i will buy your entire stock you need not go and uh, and sell it 
and look for buyer i will give you and this is the price we we i will pay so they got certainty they got very good this thing and he and he got a, again an uniqueness because now his price has further come down because he is buying the raw material stage and making them together uh, so that the final product comes out this is what we do in in a supply chain we look for a specific expertise of suppliers this is what he has done so like this every time he found a solution now what is theory this was the case what is theory theory is that in entrepreneurship and innovation you know that entrepreneur if he is pushed to a corner he can only come out of that through innovation nothing else that is a theory so people do innovate under very dire circumstances it happens this is nothing new but in this case what we saw what the author saw it took us it took him four years to write this case four years to write this case so what he saw the there are uh, one more incidents so in these four incidences he found something common and that common is commonality is that whenever he faced a dire situation he converted the scare set sorry is the most scare item of his supply chain into his competency understand competency so he was short on on design on cost on inventory sourcing etc that gradually he converted into his competence nobody can copy that his design and his access to to raw material level village tie up is something unique people even if they try to establish they will take few years to reach that stage so this is the theory that came out that when in real problem you have to innovate and if you can convert a scarce resource scarce resource of your supply chain into your competency you have made it understood any question <laughs> this is what we are looking for this is what is known as contribution so there has to be a research contribution a theoretical contribution of a research case and this happens very well when you choose to apply qualitative case study research and that happens because of right selection of theory theoretical lens you should be flexible on theoretical lens because data even if you have started uh, say there was a case the author thought he has written a team building case whereas we found that it is a leadership case how the leadership changed when a a unit of a large organization got spun off as a separate sbu so there are many so this came out from his data now coming to relating data you must the person who has asked uh, he must uh, she she must understand uh, how data is visualized data visualization technique is very important for qualitative research qualitative case study research how do you show the statements of the protagonist that you have captured may be written down or may be recorded and you have transcribed once you have transcribed that transcribed text has to be uh, filtered through at least three levels so that you can call out themes which are related to theory if you just look for uh, words or phrases in the statements of the protagonist that you have captured do are they are more fixed with the protagonist with the respondent that so and so respondent has said this that cannot be a theme so you club 
multiple respondents saying almost similar thing and also club with different data sources like i have seen this in the interview same thing or similar thing is also visible in the secondary data that i have collected so that is how in the second level you make the theme independent of the respondent but still it is nowhere near theory so having reached this is this stage then you see that the theory that you have so selected is there anything there similar thing you have to make meaning meaning of those themes and connect it with theory that is the third level of theme that is the final which is known as axial theme that is where the theory lies new theory lies have i have i explained these things are very well explained in a face to face situation where you uh, make the person do something and then check on online we find it we are finding it very difficult have i answered so i proceed uh, briefly i i i wanted to share with you uh, what are the basic steps th that you should know or keep in mind while writing a a decision focused problem solving teaching case decision focused problem solving because these two are the skills that we want uh, obviously <laughs> you have a target and for target of a teaching case are your students but there remember there is a secondary target also unless your case is picked up from 10 other cases having similar learning outcome explaining the same theory how why your case will be picked up by the faculty so faculty should see a value in picking up your case out of 10 others so you must satisfy you must understand what are the requirement of a gatekeeper like a faculty or if you have given for publication the editor desk the reviewers they are your secondary target audience you have to meet their requirement also okay. obviously specify uh, teaching learning etc and then decide in order to make it interesting how many characters you will bring in because there could be many stakeholders apart from protagonist protagonist must be there but other people around him there there could be many so how many characters who what what are their roles in arriving in helping the students to see through the data that you have given in the case to find a solution then another thing is that don't try to write the entire case in one go you write the the opening paragraph couple of paragraphs where you must bring in dramatization and introduce the protagonist introduce the context and lay before the reader the actual dilemma that is the role of first two paragraphs my suggestion is that those those days are gone where uh, case used to start that protagonist was sitting in his office plush office having a cup of tea and looking outside his window there were clouds on the horizon and so and so forth those are not required those are useless today so in order to make it dramatic you open with a dilemma somehow you find a language so i find voice for the protagonist or for for other stakeholder to place the dilemma right in the beginning so your dramatization starts automatically then say say that right closing paragraph without writing in between what you want to achieve how will you place how will you close that that also should be very uh, very intriguing so that the discussion can start in the class because unless if it is a uh, very staple type of thing uh, regular kind of closing no discussion will take place it will not excite the students to discuss among themselves so take care of that closing paragraph then decide what to write in between another thing is that we talk of often protagonist and when you read a case a teaching case uh, most often uh, you will find the voice of the author author decides this author say 
I have seen this, I have read that, all those kind of things. They are all biases. They have to be removed. So you are trying to give voice to the protagonist. You should give voice to few stakeholders to make it more interesting and more debating. And why don't you find an antagonist? Antagonist is one who believes that what the protagonist is suggesting, that will not work. He is not at loggerhead. He is not at fighting with the protagonist. But he has a different opinion, an opposite opinion, opposite view. If you can bring in, imagine the level of discussion that will happen in, the, in your class. So choose a case where antagonist is there. It is beautiful. And choose a case where Bloom's taxonomy are clearly mapped and you can take help of that and make the... So these are the few things which uh, I have explained here, especially while learning on it. One more point I wanted to say that often I, I get cases uh, for publication. For example, I remember uh, one very senior faculty, finance faculty, he had done a case, I think on, on Amazon or, or some other, or, or Walmart maybe. He analyzed past three years uh, balance sheet, cash flow statement and all that with the help of those 30 odd uh, ratios. And he has been using it. So he wrote a case, gave that data, because data is now available on, on internet and all that. So he wrote a case and submitted for publication. So I said, I, I mean, by then we had moved away from teaching cases. I said, we do not take the teaching case. He started arguing. He rang up. He started arguing, sir, I have been using this for last three sessions. And it is very good. And it, the students get really excited. I said, fine, I'm not debating that. This is a very good case for understanding how to use financial ratios, which is the requirement of learning requirement of a student. But tell me one thing, if I publish this and my readers are all accomplished, maybe finance, finance uh, authors or finance uh, person, professional persons, what value they will find, they will find here. How can I say that I have brought a case by through which I'm going to discuss with you or I'm going to make you aware of application of financial ratios and all that. So remember that audience is different. For publication, audience is faculty or uh, accomplished authors or accomplished professionals. Even for print cases and for repositories, the audience is different. Because rep repositories, very quickly a, a faculty goes there because he can download by paying a price. Of course, there are uh, packages. Those packages are more attractive than print, print magazine buying multiple cases. It is not possible there. Okay. So remember these things and these are very useful for while writing cases. Remember your audience. Final draft and all that, this we have done. Teaching note again, I mean, uh, just to emphasize on process, process of the teaching note, explain your teaching approach. How will you deal with this case in your class? The strategy to engage the whole class. It is very difficult. It is very difficult. Tips for evaluation in groups and, and individual. And it's steps for discussion. You should be ready if there is a question from from student, either they themselves can resolve it or you have to step in to provide the correct knowledge, correct answer. There are evaluation, of course, uh, reality. We don't, nobody accepts fictitious cases. You know why? In fictitious cases, who will provide the background information, the contextual information? Those information will will come from your imagination, author's imagination, which is not needed. So <laughs> reality is important, significance, comprehensiveness, uh, backed by evidence again. Uh, 
reasonably complex but not too complex because if it is too complex your objective is not create complexity in a class your objective is to explain some theory and help the students to develop those skills so don't get into complex cases and it is a very good case i also got foxed with this those are useless for class so teaching case should be simple it should be very well written story like it should have learning outcome map to bloom's taxonomy and covering some theory and it should have a scope of discussion reflection integration and all those things there are many types of cases i have been harping on these three are important for class management faculty picks up only these three problem identification decision focused and both these in application setting in real setting there are other descriptive illustrated i have shared with you that one uh, patanjali how patanjali grew in last 10 years is not a case unless you have a theory backing that unless you have a learning outcome all those the critical incidents are very small cases in normally in textbooks you find after every chapter there is a case they those are critical incident cases very small context is very small issue is also very small live cases are try to write live cases try to write in other formats like say caricature cartoon format those are coming up but live cases are possible with your mobile and uh, the camera and all that uh, you can very well write level the advantage of live cases that you can actually bring the protagonist into your class even if he is miles is sitting miles apart 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 protagonist is a must for those cases which are discussed in mba class why because they are decision focused and they are problem solving for which the students feel comfortable putting themselves in the shoes of the protagonist that is why protagonist for rest of the cases may or may not it is a nice to have kind of feature not must have feature these are not cases i have been i have been discussing dilemma dilemma has to be there no teaching case can be written with a dilemma without a dilemma sorry without a dilemma. so understand what is the dilemma what is a contemporary dilemma today also we get uh, research cases uh, on uh, acquisition of chorus by tata now today who is interested in knowing the acquisition of unless you show what is the situation today unless you pick up some contemporary phenomena within that context that will be interesting but today writing with secondary data how this thing happened and whether it was successful or not successful has no meaning dilemma and alternate alternatives also uh, people say that don't place too many alternatives uh, experts say that for class management three to four alternatives to a particular dilemma is good enough because the purpose is to ensure that the students discuss among themselves why teaching case is not required there is no don't write a teaching case with a literature review section it is not required because the questions asked that which of the alternatives will work better that is a teaching case because the sub the approach is not to bring in new knowledge not to make uh, students in class aware of something more which is beyond the case uh, take case text that is not the purpose purpose is to help them decide help them identify problem you have already given the uh, alternatives to solve the problem so your question is which of these and how will you how will you replicate it in some other area some other situation that is the question so what and how are not required so what and how will require literature review so literature review is not required hallmark of a teaching case see today this online case classes also have posed a problem in engaging and in evaluation so uh, must have a dilemma 
um, now I'm summary. Uh, must have a dilemma. Uh, must have, uh, must not have a single outcome. It should have multiple outcomes. Uh, some could be wrong. Some could be very, very good, uh, well fit, and all those things. So multiple outcomes. That is where the debate will lie. The learning will lie in that discussion. Uh, to develop problem solving and decision making, don't focus on any other skill. It is not required. It is, it, you may write 10 cases, but they will not be used for teaching purpose in MBA class. Students must discuss in this one. Most often we find uh, the cases are used for uh, group evaluation, where groups are formed, uh, cases are distributed, multiple cases, different cases are, and the students are, are, <laughs> are allowed time to discuss and present in a short time of 20 minutes or something. What are you testing? How have you checked that learning has taken place? How have you checked that did they really learn how to problem identify, how to decide? That process was opaque to you. You were not involved there. So you must ensure that case is discussed in your class and you don't play a direct role in that. That is important. So let students discuss among themselves. That is where the online breakout rooms are useful. You must have breakout groups and tell them, go and discuss, give them the, uh, or, through discussion, they must have identified the problem and let them separately discuss and come back and present. That is the use of uh, proper use of teaching case. So it brings chunk of real life that is the in online. So apart from breakout room, there are two other tools which are very helpful. You must use it. Polls. Polling will keep not only keep engaged students, but also the results will capture whether the student has understood or totally out of, uh, un I mean, totally out of focus. So polls will, uh, chats, if you handle chat questions well and put up your questions from your side, or if there is any helper, he or she can put up chat discussion questions and look at the responses that are coming up. Chat can be used, generally people keep the chat open for eight, 10 hours beyond the class. And students are encouraged to post their views so that a portion of evaluation will be done based on how they have, what they have answered and how they have answered. So by looking at chat, you chat, you can understand which person has understood, which person has not understood. And what has not understood by the general public in the class, that also comes out very well. It can also give you that which all students have not participated. So go and find out why they have not participated. Okay. So this is how these to be. So proper usage of these tools must be there. Protagonists must be present to increase richness. I said that antagonists and decide how many stakeholders. Give them voice. Bring them into discussion. In case discussion that you have written. Must accompany with a teaching case. Bloom's taxonomy, don't forget. There has to be a theoretical because you are writing a case to cover a theory. That is our target number one. And no literature review required. These are the hallmarks of a teaching case. Writing a good teaching case, first you must find a friendly organization. You must find a, a person at a fairly high rank who can provide information, who can authorize you to write cases, and who can finally, once the case is written, he can give you permission to publish. Okay. So friendly organization is required. Uh, in that organization, you must see a phenomena on which you can write a theory linked case. Okay. The, the size or the uh, stature of the organization doesn't matter. If you can find and get permission to write a case on HUL, Hindustan Lever, 
very good that case will be will be will fly actually but will you get permission think of it and get that thing cleared right in the beginning even an entrepreneurial smaller form is good enough because you are looking for a phenomena you are looking for a problem there so problems are are many rather much more <laughs> than a structured a large organization in an entrepreneurial form so select that phenomena well link it with theory and then write a case interesting now inter i have discussed this that to make interesting and impactful problem selection look at the organization uh, you can look at at two at three levels you find out the organization processes you look at the processes that go in a person's mind or you can look at process look at a process where the improvement or some some defects are there these are the area these are interesting problems it has to be contemporary it must have global appeal because the same case will be should be used in other other places also so make even if you are writing on indian context uh, you should make it important for for global audience like that so these are all with your, it is a repetition i have it's also i have discussed they remember the example of amazon or walmart future of course study say case study must evolve evolve on two fronts because of push of digital physical merging blockchain ai technology driven ethics governance sustainability changed consumption all these things are coming into text coming into mba knowledge so there should be written cases written on these and second the skill set is expanding it is no longer critical thinking critical thinking has to be there you cannot escape from critical thinking but along with that two other skill set must be present in a in a student information media and technology cell they must be technology savvy they must be information savvy they must be media savvy these are three different and they must know how to tackle how to res be resilient when they face adversity in life that is life and career skills flexibility adaptability self direction cross cultural accountability leadership all these things these are life so you require to write cases on a expanded set of skills earlier we were focused only on problem solving and decision making they are there they are part of your critical thinking what if you can write with information background media background or technology background it will better it will be better or if you can bring in a create a situation where the career and life skills are challenged that will be even better so that's all this is a format we use for starting thinking about a teaching case it is a case abstract so if you can fill up this uh, you will be better in a better position and my standard offer open offer is to all of those who can write cases who can fill up this this format after filling up send it to me uh, we may look at it take a look and guide you further for publication thank you thank you very much these are my contacts we have written a book this book is unique uh, it has 24 uh, chapters written by very eminent case authors it covers almost all facets of case method as it should evolve that is why the uh, title is case method for digital natives it is inexpensive it is available on amazon it will help you as a very good support material that's all thank you
so can we take questions yeah please now it is up to your time Uh, so there is a question in the chat box by Mr. Sanjay Gupta. Uh, in the case of comparative study of different companies, is there any standard with respect to the number of companies one could select at a time? Uh, there, the number is actually minimum number is three. Why? Because two will help you in extracting the finding. Extracting the finding. How will you test the reliability? So check up by comparing the other two. Use the third case. So actually, there will be a triangulation: A to B, B to C, C to A. That is how you establish the validity and reliability of your research. So minimum three, maximum anything. So it was really a very wonderful, very knowledgeable session. You know, you have cleared a lot of doubts. So uh, before we proceed further, there is a request to all the participants that there would be a, a link, feedback link, which would be shared in the chat books very soon. So you all are required to fill the same. Uh, and the validatory session will be at 2.30. And so all are required to join um, the same at time. Uh, now I request Dr. Pooja Mehta, to formally extend vote of thanks to our uh, revered speaker of the day. Uh, thank you, Dr. Uh, our most revered resource person for the day, uh, Dr. Ajoy K. Day, respected principal sir, Dr. Vishal Kumar, and dear participants. On behalf of Sri Aurobindo College of Commerce and Management, I, Dr. Pooja Mehta, deem it a great honor and a privilege to extend my vote of thanks to Dr. Ajoy K. Day, our most invited, valued invited resource person. I extend a very hearty gratitude to you, sir, for sharing your valuable knowledge with all of us and on designing a teaching case. Your immense support for making us learn various aspects of decision-focused, problem-solving, and application-based teaching case design is highly commendable. Thank you so much, sir. My heartfelt thanks to the principal, Dr. Vishal Kumar, our guiding beacon, for conceiving and executing this much enlightening case study workshop. I would also take this opportunity to extend my thanks to all the participants for being so supportive and active learners throughout this session. Lastly, I feel thankful to the organizing committee of this workshop, Ms. Monica Sethi, Dr. Pooja Jain, and Mr. Sanjay Gupta for putting in their persistent efforts in organizing this workshop. Overall, it was a great learning experience. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Uh, Ajoy, sir, Thanks. before we all leave, I uh, just want to say thank you to you once again because you shared a lot of new My things thing. that uh, that we could learn. At least I thank did you. know a number of things which uh, you know uh, I I could got to know uh, from your uh, presentation thank and you. your lecture. So thank you so much because uh, differentiating between teaching case and a research case and then linking it up with Bloom's taxonomy and then how to evaluate the teaching notes. Generally, how to write teaching notes is there. How to evaluate the teaching note also was there in that. And then you took a lot of examples also to clarify the things. So thank you so much, Ajay, sir. Thank I, you so much. I will be more happy if I get few case abstracts from you people. I will guide you. Uh, and we can take it forward. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much, sir, for uh, extending your hand. And uh, certainly, we'll give it a try because we are into writing cases, and uh, definitely, we need somebody to hold our hand. And uh, uh, we look up to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. May I drop off? Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. It's a kind request to every participant. Please uh, fill the feedback form and uh, join the next session, validatory session at 2.30 in time.